Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today for this Marketing Week webinar brought to you by Nilsson. My name is Ellen Hammett and I'm a reporter at Marketing Week and I'll be chairing the webinar today. Shortly I'll be handing over to Ben who will be talking to you about the five game-changing facts that prove the value of multi-touch attribution. We'll have time for Q&A at the end of the presentation, so please send any questions you have throughout the webinar and we'll answer as many as we can at the end. Right then, over to you. Uh, afternoon everybody, my name is Ben Samuel and uh, I lead the commercial function for Nielsen Marketing Effectiveness in, in Europe. Um, and I'm going to be talking about um, the value of multi-touch attribution. Um, so without further ado, um, I think the the most important place is, is to, to start with the understanding that um, we live in an era of, that has an unprecedented, unprecedented amount of, of data. Data is everywhere. So there is a huge opportunity for, for all marketers, but really leveraging that opportunity to, to fully understand your consumer is something that, something that needs a lot of work. And without the work, the, the data still exists, but necessarily the, the, the insights don't. Um, we all know that technology follows us as we work, travel, shop, browse, and, and Theoretically and technically, this makes it possible for for marketers to understand consumers better than than, than ever before. Um, but we see that a lot of companies are still relying on the same tools and systems and, and metrics to measure their their KPIs as they did before this explosion in data. In a sense, they they haven't taken the steps to to lean into the the new world. Um, the old approach to measurement treats all interactions and, and customers the same. On, on the one hand, this makes performance um, very easy to measure, um, but on the other hand, it hurts marketers in, in the long run because it, it fails to get to it fails to get to the truth. Um, and our our feeling is that. Um, New times demand new measurement, and multi-touch attribution was invented specifically to meet the needs of advertisers in the digital era, and to help harness that, um, to help harness the, the wealth of data that is available to to optimal effect, to the best effect, um, and and what it does is offer the speed and granularity and accuracy that you need to get insights that are actionable and can then be turned into uh, into bankable outcomes. Um, so we found that while many marketers um, intuitively understand and believe in the ideas that underpin multi-touch attribution, um, there was still a gap that needed to be filled to prove its effectiveness with um, cold hard facts and stats. And so as a result, Nielsen invested um, a fair bit of time and effort in, in late 2018 to, to do just that, to prove the value of, of multi-touch attribution. And we we dug into our data and the the output was was pretty clear and uncontrovertible. You know, fundamentally, multi-touch attribution works to improve your bottom line. Um, and there are a set of, of, of five facts that that back this up. And we will um, we'll dive into this um, we'll dive into these shortly. Um, but but first, um, I think it's important to take a step back, and um, it's pretty obvious that you know, more, more than ever, marketers today need um, concrete evidence that the campaigns they're investing in lead to lead to and, and drive business outcomes. 
you know, be that leads or conversions or sales or, or, or revenue. Um, and gone are the days when um, marketing investment decisions were, were made based on gut feel or, you know, who, who, buys, the, who buys the best lunch. Um, increasingly, we see marketers um, trying to answer three, three key questions. Um, and the, the questions are, who are my best customers, which tactics deliver the best results, and what's the best way to spend my budget? But, but answering these questions gets harder each year, because each year, each month, pretty much as well, because there are more and more channels, there are more platforms, there are more devices to measure. Um, and it becomes increasingly difficult to understand within all that noise what makes a potential customer go from seeing your ad to browsing your site to becoming a, a paying customer. Um, these days, the you know, consumers take an increasingly complex digital journey. And the, I think the, the combination of the complexity of the digital ecosystem and the complexity of a consumer's digital journey make it very hard to answer these questions with any level of confidence using traditional digital measurement such as, as last touch measurement. The, um, when you think about the, the complete consumer journey, it, it, it becomes pretty clear. Consumers experience multiple media touch points leading up to the specific um, KPI, um, or potentially a, you know, an online conversion, um, a sale, a brand engagement, or you know, whatever is, is, the, is the end goal. Um, and some of these touch points are what we call addressable, um, you know, you know for a fact that a user has been exposed to it. Other would be non-addressable media like uh, radio, TV, print, outdoor potentially. Um, but understanding what is working and how to how to assemble the correct mix of tactics in a world with digital, cross-device, and, and offline components is one of the biggest challenges marketers face um, and trying you know within that to answer the questions of who are my best customers which tactics deliver the best results and and what's the best way to, to spend my budget is is very difficult but I think it's important to to remember that consumers don't you know they don't envision they don't see themselves engaged in a customer journey they don't they don't care about how brands have set up marketing automation workflow or, or any tactic designed to reach them. At the end of the day, they just want uh, you or, or a marketing team to behave uh, in a way that, that suggests and makes them feel like, like you understand them. Um, so what this means is that marketers need the kind of marketing intelligence that can reduce the um, complexity of the puzzle to, to help deliver that, that feeling of understanding to, um, to consumers. Um, I think at a very high level, it, it's, it's clear that there are, it, it's clear that it's not always easy to analyze data. Um, and a lot of people will go on about the, the complexity of the ecosystem and the complexity of the consumer journey as you know as I have been doing but there are but <clears throat> the question we should ask all, always around that is um, are there good stats to, to support that and and the short answer is yes consumers are interacting with with more channels than ever um, some good research here um, from the e-commerce uh, foundation shows that 88% of consumers 
pre-research online purchases before making a purchase online or in store. Um, and according to eMarketer, interactions more than tripled from 2014 to 2007, uh, 2017. Um, and so, you know, that means that there's a huge wealth of information that is potentially difficult to capture uh, and analyze. It's, it's the same as with any resort. It's never a case of uh, clicking your fingers to, to derive value. Um, and many marketers are potentially sitting on gold mines of data that they aren't able to make good use of. Um, data silos and, and silo teams sometimes make that consistent analysis very difficult, if not impossible. Um, and the uh, level of in-house expertise needed to dig into this sort of data is, is also quite often in, in short supply. Um, but I guess the, the point I want to make is that it's not, you know, no one is alone in this. Um, it, this is a common problem across many, many marketers. Um, they, marketers in general struggle to understand um, what each touch point is worth, but both in terms of uh, knowing how it influences customers and how much it contributes to growth. And um, a survey by the, um, the Winterbury Group found that nearly two-thirds of, of U.S. marketers were, in the coming year, going to put a higher priority on attribution for, um, for that reason. Um, and as the, um, you know, as the landscape becomes more competitive in the marketing space, marketers who don't adopt um, new techniques do risk falling behind. Um, and even marketers who potentially um, might view themselves as advanced when it comes to, to data science and analytics find themselves relying on old school techniques to, to measure, measure performance. Um, in general, we see marketers trying to cobble together data from CRM, web analytics, automation systems, email platforms, plug it all into Excel, and then using metrics like clicks and impressions, which are not really adequate to, to measure success accurately. Um, because these metrics are treating all interactions and all customers the same, um, and while they're easier to do, they hamper performance in the long run. And according to, to, to this stat here, according to eConsultancy, um, there's a huge opportunity, and despite rising interest in attribution, only 15% of marketers are using advanced attribution models to measure effectiveness today. Um, and I think when when you think about that small percentage of, of 15% in the context of um, what, what that shows is, is a huge opportunity. And again, this stat from um, McKinsey shows that um, only a small percentage of the value derived from advanced analytics has been unlocked, as little as 10%. So again, um, there is a huge, there's a huge amount of headroom to grow and to derive value. And, you know, what this says to us is that as marketers continue to seek to um, sift through these unprecedented amounts of data, um, many, if not most, remain um, unable to analyze it properly and to um, derive insights that are actionable. Um, this stat, this 10% stat, really calls out how big the opportunity is for businesses to make improvements um, and how much value can be unlocked in, in many sectors um, if 
as little as 10% is, is the starting point. So in a sense, it, it feels like it's never been more important to, to start getting marketing analytics right. Um, marketers need to know that every marketing dollar um, spent is delivering the max of, maximum impact. Um, and that's the main reason we feel that multi-touch attribution is, um, is a game changer. So before going in, before talking about those, those facts, I think taking a step back again, just to uh, ensure people understand what multi-touch attribution is. Um, and fundamentally, multi-touch attribution is about using granular um, person level data to measure past marketing performance. And what it does is calculate the impact of every single touch point and beneath that touch point, every single dimension on every KPI. And it does that in near real time and then produces uh, an output or produces a um, reporting which reflects um, the credit that each channel and each tactic and each dimension deserves for its contribution to those KPIs. So multi-touch attribution platforms, um, they consolidate and normalize uh, data that was potentially previously in, in separate silos and help create a more complete and comprehensive picture of, of marketing performance. Um, it, make, it means that marketers can truly understand how a consumer journey moves from that, that first touch point through to a conversion and can understand and assign an accurate value to, to each interaction. Um, but the fundamental use is um, to understand how digital media drives customer behavior. Um, and algorithmic attribution um, allows, allows marketers to see which tactics drove conversions for, for which audiences to understand uh, the influence of, of cross channel um, and the output is you know depending on what the output is, it means that we can um, reallocate spend to boost high performing tactics uh, and prevent waste on low performing tactics, so potentially moving money to high performing tactics taking taking budget or investment away from poor performing tactics. Um, and it means marketers can, can understand which tactics are having a positive or a negative ROI uh, and be able to understand this um, and make adjustments while campaigns are still in flight so that you are able to have a direct impact on the actual campaign rather than um, looking at it um, afterwards. Um, the, um, we, Nielsen understands that, um, that using multi-touch attribution to, to get a picture of the ROI of every dollar spent has never been more, more crucial. Um, and, you know, we've spent a lot of time helping many of the world's largest brands and many of their agency partners to be more successful. And the, the result of this is that we've accumulated a, a pool of, of, of uh, millions and millions of, of data points about what works and what doesn't. And within this, um, we analyzed and, and anonymized um, uh, over 100 B2C client data sets covering over almost almost three billion in, in media spend and billions of impressions over a six month period in, in 2018. And this was done across a, a wide range of, of companies. 
um, in various different um, in different verticals. So that's that's the the starting point for um, our analysis. Um, but what did um, what did it actually what did it actually bring about? So what it showed again is that there is a uh, direct impact of multi-touch attribution at driving bankable business outcomes and improving the bottom line. And I'm now going to take some, some time to dive into a bit of detail around each of these, um, each of these five facts. Um, so the first, um, the first one is that um, multi-touch attribution can unlock 25% in um, in opportunity costs. So, you know, what this means is that um, we looked at uh, client data across industry verticals, um, across um, channels, and different KPIs, um, and showed that. And that showed that for clients starting to use our platform, 25% of their media tactics yielded, um, did not drive anything against the stated KPI. So it did not, if, if the KPI was a conversion or a lead, 25% of media tactics delivered no, no conversion. Um, and you know this is tactics where the spend was was greater than zero, but the contribution of the tactic to conversions was zero. You know what this means is that on average, 25% of media tactics don't have any impact, have zero impact. They don't generate a lead, they don't generate a, a site visit or a sale or any other KPI, which is pretty significant because it means that. In general, for, for the clients that are starting to use our platform, at that point, um, a quarter of their marketing spend is being truly wasted. Um, and equally importantly, if you don't know what's not driving results, um, it means you're using up your budget without deriving value. Um, it's kind of the you know the old uh, spray and pray approach. It's really important to know which tactics are not producing results because this unlocks much smarter spending. Um, and the ability to to cut out this fat will, um, in the short term and the and the long term, yield significant savings that can then be reallocated. To higher performing tactics that will generate sales and will generate deliver against um, KPIs. Um, so the the second fact um, talks about uh, how talks about the impact of historical measurement tactics and how they can over or under value channels massively. So if you, if you think about it, in, in planning media, I think there's still a, tend for, a tendency for um, marketers to use some level of gut feeling about what's working and, and what's not. And clearly, um, marketing and media is, is still a, a combination of, of art and science. But too much reliance on art is is not going to deliver in the in the long run. And what multi-touch attribution helps to do is to give credit where credit is due. So without multi-touch attribution, it can be very easy to um, significantly overvalue or undervalue the contributions of different channels to desired outcomes. Um, and that's because when channels are being measured in silos, it's very, very hard to understand the true impact on conversions or the interplay between them. And this, what this chart shows is 
how much credit a particular channel gained in driving the, the desired KPI when you compare um, the view using last touch attribution, using multi-touch attribution versus, um, versus last touch. So the columns represent um, <clears throat> different KPIs such as uh, brand engagement, um, leads, um, offline sa and, and sales. Um, and we looked at how much a given channel was impacting those specific KPIs um, using a multi-touch attribution model versus the, the flawed last touch model. And you can see significant um, significant areas of overinvestment and underinvestment. Um, fact number three talks to the the fact that without again without multi-touch attribution, there is the potential to waste uh, you know fifty percent or more of, more of spend by delivering the wrong message to the the wrong audience. Um, and all marketers have different strategies on how best to reach consumers that, that matter most to them. Um, they're fundamentally their target audience, but what everyone has in common is that they are trying to reach that audience, whether it's a very broad target or much more niche. Um, and we all know target audiences can be divided any number of ways to create custom audience segments, um, and those can potentially include uh, you know, basic attributes like gender or age, um, as well as more sophisticated custom attributes like lifetime value or, or propensity to buy. Um, but the problem faced by everyone is that reaching your target audience with the right message can be, you know, can be hit or miss, to, to say the least. Because there are two dimensions to this. The first is understanding who your audience is, and the second is understanding which messages resonate most with them. And fundamentally, if, if you don't know who your target audience is, or you don't know the content or the messages or the offers that influence them, you are probably wasting your budget by either reaching the right people with the wrong message, or even worse, reaching the wrong people with the wrong message. Um, and our analysis showed that without um, multi-touch attribution, this waste can be 50% um, or, or more by delivering the wrong message to, to the wrong audience. Um, and fact number four um, talks to something that um, I think is, is probably intuitively obvious, but, but is quite often an overlooked point about measurement, which is that, um, you know, the more data you're able to use for, for, as a basis for, for decisions, the more accurate the output is, is likely to be. And the challenge with... <clears throat> With, with traditional um, digital measurement techniques um, is that in reality you are probably basing decisions only on the last engagements consumers had before they met the, the conditions that you're, that you're measuring, before they, they, um, they hit your KPI. Um, the challenge with that is that, you know, it's, it's in an increasingly complex marketing and media landscape, Consumers may already, prior to that last event, may already have had myriad interactions with, with your marketing and your brand. Um, but if you use last touch um, measurement, um, traditional digital measurement, it ignores all these other interactions. And when we looked at the data, we found that um, on average, using a last, using last touch measurement approach uses um, less than 4% of the available data. In contrast, multi-touch attribution is modeling based on all available data. Um, and at the very least, marketers should be very circumspect about making investment decisions based on 
just four percent of the evidence because you know what where in life would you happily approach a challenge in this way when there are alternatives to this approach which allow you to use all the available data points um, and the, the final fact is that um, without you without multi-touch attribution there is um, uh, a real risk that decision you could be basing decisions on um, very out-of-date data so basing decisions on weeks or month old data is is obviously going to be inaccurate but that also means it's expensive um, and we did some analysis which showed that without daily multi-touch attribution marketers are typically wasting around 38 percent 38 percent of monthly spend by investing in low performing or saturated tactics for example when you use data from a couple of weeks or a month ago you're tacitly agreeing that you believe that what worked in the past is going to continue to work today but we know that that isn't the case um, particularly in you know fast moving digital ecosystems like search or social um, and a result of this is that it makes you make decisions in hindsight and it means that you, you you miss opportunities to pull the right levers at the right time. You miss opportunities to fix tactics while a, while a campaign is in flight. Um, and on you know, for example, on a budget of, of five hundred thousand, thirty eight percent um, would be you know, one hundred and ninety thousand, and extrapolated out for even bigger budgets. Um, so for every week that you wait for data. Um, in order to make investment decisions, markets are potentially putting 38% of the monthly budget at risk. Um, conversely, daily multi-touch attribution prevents this waste and allows marketers to ask themselves, you know, why they would expose themselves to a risk of, of using out-of-date data. Um, and I think as 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 marketers face increasing pressure to deliver you know not just clicks and views but long-term growth and bankable outcomes um, there needs to be marketers need to adapt to the digital era to, to really thrive um, and the reality is that customers and their interactions aren't the same and that instead of relying on siloed or channel specific metrics marketers can now and, and should be using digital era tools to measure at the digital person level across all um, tactics and channels and, and multi-touch attribution is is a is a game changer that can deliver that and put you know potentially your business on um, on a whole new um, whole new playing field um, so that's, that's the end of the, the presentation for for today. Um, if you do want to go deeper onto this specific theme, um, you know, please um, please visit our resource centre, um, or and or download the um, the ebook that we've got there. Um, and you can also see lots of case studies, um, videos, and, and best practice. And you can even you can even request a um, a demo of our platform. Um, but with that, um, uh, I'll pass it back um, for some uh, Q&A. Thanks, Ben. That was really interesting. Um, so now we have time for some questions. And if you haven't asked a question yet and would like to, there is still time. So I'm going to kick off with what we've got so far. Um, first of all, okay, if different channels are being measured by different KPIs, how can our different teams, internal or external, like our agency, get on the same system for measuring success? Um, so I, th I think that's a that's a really good question because um, it talks specifically to the one of the big challenges of digital is um, that I've talked about already is, is that 
data is in silos. Um, and that's potentially as a result of using different tools, but also potentially as a result of different teams or stakeholders or agencies managing different parts of the overall um, marketing mix. And what uh, multi-touch attribution does to help um, help solve that problem is to pr to provide a single platform that brings all the data together and allows all the relevant stakeholders, be it um, people working for the brand themselves, agencies, um, consultants, to access the information in um, in a single place and leverage the same um, a single measurement um, platform and, and single measurement system um, for all their uh, digital marketing. And you mentioned being able to connect in near real time. What does that mean? I thought you could only collect data on a monthly cadence. Um, so I think it, Taking you know, taking a step back in in uh, a brief history lesson of um, multi-touch attribution, um, it, it's been around for a little while, but has over time evolved. And um, Nielsen's attribution product, for example, um, a few years ago was um, only able to uh, deliver measurement on a on a monthly basis and we gradually improved that to every two weeks then weekly and then daily and those improvements were driven by client requirements who because clients optimize and buy media in the digital space on a daily basis so require um, reporting and measurement at the same cadence so that they are able to optimize media based on the most uh, up-to-date and recent data. So as a result of that, we've, we've had to adapt and move and deliver a platform that, that um, meets, meets the cadence that, that um, marketers need, to need in the digital space. And um, what is an effective attribution model? I think an effective attribution model is fundamentally one that um, helps a marketer understand how all of their digital, if we're talking in the digital space, how all of their digital media and marketing contributed to drive their stated KPIs. So um, if you are able to look at all media and understand the impact of all of that media at the, your chosen KPIs and be able to um, then give credit or attribute credit back accurately to all those touch points. That is what I would define as an effective attribution model. Conversely, an ineffective attribution model is one that is either um, inaccurate at doing that or is not looking at the whole, um, not looking at all available touch points, um, or is potentially making estimations, because fundamentally what is needed from an attribution model is something that is uh, both accurate and actionable, so that you have confidence in it and can use that data to optimize, um, optimize in-flight campaigns, but also optimize your your future media and how are you able to connect mobile devices and tablets into the customer journey uh, that's a, that's a good, good question as well um so clearly this is a, a a very important um part of um multi-touch attribution because as anyone knows um consumers are now active on multiple devices i've got i've got two phones a laptop at home a laptop at work so there's there's kind of four instances of me um but in order to understand how media is driving my behavior it's incumbent on um 
a measurement solution to be able to collapse all the different instances of me across mobile, desktop, tablet, etc., into one into one user. Um, so we do that through um, partnering with <clears throat> with some other vendors in this space, um, particularly um, particularly Tapad, who um, who do a great job in the um, in the cross device space. And who within a marketing organisation would use multi-touch attribution? So within um, within any marketing organisation, um, there are there are always going to be lots of different stakeholders, and our engagements with clients vary wildly. Um, so there's no kind of right or wrong answer to this, but I think we would say that the the best type of engagements or where um, our engagements are most successful is where there is, uh, on the one hand, a top-down um, understanding of multi-touch attribution and a top-down mandate um, that the marketing team and, and marketing and media stakeholders need to adopt um, multi-touch attribution metrics. Um, so that comes from you know, that comes from the, the CMO level. Um, and at the same time, there needs to be a bottom-up um, uh, ability for the marketing team and marketing stakeholders, be that people within the brand or agencies or consultants, um, to both get on board with um, using uh, multi-touch attribution um, and make sure that they are working with the um, the Nielsen teams to derive the best insight and then start putting those uh, recommendations into market. So, you know, who within an organisation would actually use it? It's probably not the CMO. He's maybe logging into the to, to the platform to look at the executive dashboard. The users are probably more at the um, at the level where media planning is taking place, where optimization is taking place, and where media buying is taking place. Is it possible to integrate DSPs for display data? Um, so I think this question has two, two sides to it. Um, on the one hand, any media that is being bought using a DSP, we can absolutely capture, um, and that would mean any touch points driven by uh, programmatic buys would would be part of the uh, would be part of the measurement alongside alongside everything else and on the other hand um, I talked a little bit about actionability being really important um, so one of the the key things is to be able to use the output to optimize um, optimize your your media buy, and one mechanism that, um, that we have for this is to integrate with <clears throat> a number of uh, a number of the, the global DSPs, and that integration involves us pushing um, pushing uh, attribution attributed correctly attributed data, so multi-touch attribution reporting into these DSPs. Um, automatically to help them optimize um, using the right data as opposed to optimizing using um, flawed last touch attribution data. Um, how would we get a small win to start so that we can drive adoption and excitement among all teams? So I think that's that's a very um, that's a very good point because this is a, you know, this is this is not something that you can uh, implement um, like you can you can turn on a light. Um, once implementation has taken place and, and data is starting to to be collected, there is still a a change management process that needs to take place within the brand to build up confidence that what. Um, the multi-touch attribution tool is telling you is right 
and will deliver bankable outcomes. Um, and our advice is, is always precisely precisely that: to work with our um, to what work with our specialist attribution consultants to um, uncover um, opportunities um, and to start to action those opportunities. And always the focus will be on the low hanging fruit first, things like uh, frequency potentially, how to um, reduce the, the huge amount of waste that, that you know most most organizations see delivering over frequency, delivering you know 10, 12, 20 uh, impressions to a to an individual person, how you can improve that um, frequency. Um, to yet deliver the same uh, the same outcomes, and so our um, consultants would work with um, clients to uncover those opportunities, um, to frame tests that show um, that will help that will help build up confidence in the tool, and gradually those tests will get bigger and bigger, and adoption of the tool will get bigger and bigger. But it is important to uh, to start small. Great. Uh, that's all we've got time for this afternoon. Um, but that was really interesting. And the webinar will be available on the Marketing Week website afterwards. So thank you to Ben and thank you to everyone for listening.